One of the victims killed in the Highland Park mass shooting is being remembered as a hero as he shielded his two-year-old son. Kevin McCarthy and his wife, Arena, were both killed as they watched the parade with their son, Aiden. The toddler was found underneath his father's wounded body. And now his family, his grandparents, are facing the unimaginable task of explaining what happened that day. Adrian Broadus is out front. A father's final act in the chaos of Monday's mass shooting. 37-year-old Kevin McCarthy shielding his two-year-old son, Aiden, from a gunman who opened fire from a nearby roof, saving his life. He was um, pulled out from underneath his father, um, who was still bleeding uh, by, by um, Good Samaritans. And as they pulled him out, and then they went to work on his dad um, uh, because his dad's leg was still bleeding. Um, and then a, a couple scooped him up um, and, and took him to safety. Um, and then his dad died on the scene. Um, but yes, his dad did everything he could to protect his son and, and, and was successful in that. The boy's mother, 35-year-old Arena McCarthy, also among the seven people killed. Yes, I'm good over here. Greg and Dana Ring spotted Aiden, covered in blood with the Good Samaritan, as they sheltered from the gunfire. The Rings took the child to police. When we pulled in, the cops looked like they were getting ready for war. I'll never forget, I pulled up and I said, this is not arcade. It's not his blood. He's okay. What should we do? And a cop said, we can't be babysitters now. Can you take care of him? We said, of course. While the rings cared for Aiden, a neighbor saw a photo of him on a neighborhood watch page, helping to reunite Aiden with his grandparents. He didn't know. I don't know how they're going to tell him. How do you tell an 18-month-old boy that mommy and daddy are in heaven now? Aiden's grandfather, Michael Levberg, telling the Chicago Tribune that when reunited at a local police station, Aiden said, are mommy and daddy coming soon? Levberg said he doesn't understand. Levberg told the Chicago Sun-Times his daughter and son-in-law were crazy about their son and had been looking forward to enjoying the July 4th parade with him. Now, the Levbergs are mourning the loss of their daughter and son-in-law, while also caring for their grandson, who has been left with no parents. His parents were both murdered uh, by the shooter at, at the parade. Uh, a young couple uh, killed in the prime of their life, a, a young child left, left an orphan. Back now with Dana and Greg Ring. Dana, you were telling us before the break that you and your family ran to the parking garage for safety. When was it that you, you found uh, little Aiden? So the kid, we got the kids safely into the car and Greg and I were sort of standing outside the car kind of waiting for some kind of signal that we would feel it was okay to try and drive away. And as we were waiting and walking and sort of looking at each other like, what the, what just happened? This lady came down the staircase we had before and she was holding a, a little boy and she was covered in blood as was he. And she, you could just tell it was starting to like immediately affect her. She was shaking physically. I was concerned she might drop the boy. So we walked over to see if she needed help and ended up taking the boyfriend. She needed a minute. We, so she, she handed the she us. handed the boy over to us. We could tell that it wasn't her blood. It wasn't his blood. She was shaking. She was having a hard time talking. And we looked at each other. She handed him over to me. She then sat down and Dana tended to her. And I understand you, you first stopped at the fire department with, with Aiden. What did they yeah. tell you? So then we jumped in the car with our kids and Aiden, and we decided to go to Dana's parents' house. And on the way there, uh, we passed by the Highland Park Fire Station, and we pulled in. And as I pulled in, the police looked like they were getting ready for war with machine guns and helmets. And I stepped outside with Aiden, and I said, he's not our boy. What should we do? Can somebody help us? And somebody said, I'll never forget, he said, you know, we can't be babysitters. He wasn't disrespectful, he just said, we can't be babysitters right now, can you take care of him? And we said, of course, and then we drove to Dana's parents' house, and that's where we, we kept Aiden for a couple of hours. And, and did, was, was he saying anything to you? Um, he, I just kept trying to get his name because I wanted to be able to talk to him in a calming way, but if I, you know, I, he was, I was guessing he was somewhere between two, two and a half, three. And every time I asked his name, his response each time was, uh, Mama, Dada, come to get me soon. Their car, they come to get me soon. And I was just like, yeah, buddy, they're going to come so, so soon. Um, so we just kept trying to get 
his name out of him, you know, every so often, just because, you know, obviously we wanted to be able to talk to him and um, he just was seemingly okay. He wasn't crying. He wasn't. He was watching cartoons with that four-year-old. My dad took him in the back and was Mm. holding him watching Mickey Mouse with my daughter um, and totally otherwise normal. I mean, if you didn't know where we had come from, you wouldn't guess that there had been anything wrong with him. He was markedly calm. And how were you finally able to get him reunited with his grandparents? When we went to the fire station, I gave a detect a police officer my in-laws address and my cell phone number. And then we got a, a text message uh, from a detective and the detective came over and a couple hours later took Aiden. We put our, my in-laws gave us their extra car seat. We put it in the squad car and then they took Aiden to where families were being reunited. How, how are you, how are you all doing? I mean, how are your, your kids doing? Our kids are upstairs uh, with my eating macaroni and cheese and watching cartoons with uh, <laughs> Dana's parents. So I think they're, they're doing okay, better than it could have been. It's starting to come out in bits and pieces when I think they're thinking about it and when I don't realize they might have it on their mind. Random, my four-year-old particularly has started more frequently asking or asked me why did why did I why did we make them go to the parade? She didn't even want to go, which it actually was true. Um, they're alive. They've got a lot of questions. They're alive. They're they upstairs. Have a lot of questions. We just keep trying yeah. to remind them how yeah. very incredibly lucky we were to, yes, it was a crazy, scary thing, but we were so, so lucky in the end to have all made it through it okay, and we just have to keep focusing on that part of it. Yeah, well, you're, you're, I'm so glad you're okay, your whole family, and, and for helping Aiden. Um, we, we should all be lucky in that situation that people, that a, a child finds people like you. So Dana Ring, Greg Ring, thank you so much. I appreciate Anderson. it. Anderson. Anderson, Anderson, yes. can I have one minute to say something or I'll never forgive myself? Sure, sure. We need to stop giving AR-15 machine guns to people with mental health issues. I'm not trying to say anything political right now. I'm speaking as a father. As a, a I'm speaking issue. as a father. I'm speaking as a husband. I'm speaking for this community. I'm speaking for communities in Texas, in Florida, for synagogues, for churches. There are damaged people walking around our society who need help. I feel empathy for them. We need to find a way to help them. I know that they should not have access to AR-15 machine guns. I understand that this bill that was just passed during the next shooting, politicians on both aisles are going to say we passed the bill. Half measures do not work. It was a compromise by both sides. And it's a compromise to try to trick the American people. Our our children of all communities are being shot at. It has to stop. I don't know how, but I know that individuals who have mental health issues should not be able to get AR-15 machine guns. No one should. No no one should. should. But I I also understand the reality of, of this country that I love. I love America. But sometimes you have to criticize things you love. When I'm a jerk, my wife tells me, I accept it and I try to be better. America, we are we are failing. And, and it's just, it's enough. And this particular time, it happened to be the group of most affected were all young kids that I don't even know how or when or how long it, it will take to even come out or be handled in however many ways it will affect each and every child that experienced this. In this case, it was filled. Everyone that was there, yeah. it, the vast majority of, of people that attended this parade were young children and their parents or grandparents. And this moment, they in the middle of their hometown, had their parents and every grown up around them probably just exhibiting the most amount of terror they ever have felt or could possibly experience. And I can't even begin to access my own feelings about it, let alone predict my kids. We deserve to be safe. 
We all do. Everybody. That's it. Be better. In the ring. Greg Ring. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.